Welcome to Arcade Attack. Player one, please press start. Gentlemen, start your engine. Player two has now entered the game. Player three, choose your weapon. Lights, camera, action! It's time for another. <laughs> it's time for another arcade attack podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm leading it today, guys. Uh, my name's Adrian, and I'm here with my more than able uh, companions, good old Keith. Hello. And Dilsey. Hello. So, guys, are you ready for a tale of uh, ambition? <laughs> I like how the puns have started already. Oh uh, well, yeah. The whole not, podcast not, it, started with a pun. <laughs> It did, it did. No, this, this should be quite an interesting story. Uh, you might have heard it before. Um, it's a tale of one man living his dreams, seeing an opportunity, and uh, really going for it, and probably never knowing when to quite stop. He kept, <laughs> this guy kept going and going and going and going. And you know what? He, I, I'll talk about the man later on. He gets a bit of a bad rap on the internet. Mm-hmm. And I'm here to defend him a little bit. Okay. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So I'm going to defend good old Vince Perry. Vince, we love you. No, <laughs> no, Vince, we love you. Well, um, guys, you know, growing up, that video games are quite expensive. Oh, too expensive. And you had like, like three that. games growing up, so mm. yeah, they're expensive. <laughs> when they started to produce, and I'm in front of me, you can't see it, lovely listeners, I'm holding a Mega Games 1. <sighs> what a yeah. Legendary Mega yeah. Games 1. Oh. I think that was one of the ones I had. <laughs> Two great games and one terrible game. Yeah, yeah. We love that World Cup Italian night. Oh, we? yeah. <laughs> but in all seriousness, these were quite good, weren't they, back in the day? Free games mm. in one. Yeah, good value. Good value. You know, obviously, these games would have been out for a few years at the time. Yeah. You picked it up probably the same sort of price as not one game, you'd yeah. say. Bish, bash, bosh. And I think Mega Games 2. This is the one. That's the one I like the best. That is classic. That is, that is like so a whole. Good. Like half a year's worth of entertainment. Though. Easy. Well, back then. So tell everyone what's on Mega Games 2. Well, there's the, Re- sorry, the Revenge of Shinobi. Classic. Streets thought, of Rage. I thought you were going to say The Rent of Shinobi. <laughs> no, I was about to say. <laughs> the, rent, the Rent would have been quite high, I think, for Shinobi. It would have been. And Golden Axe. Oh. There's, there's no stinkers, isn't there? That is a brilliant, brilliant No stinkers. Cartridge. We like that. And two multiplayer games on there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. So we, we appreciate that. Um, these were legal. These were legally made by Sega. <laughs> we like these. Hashtag yeah. legal. They are legal. They, they are licensed. Like yeah, like it. Legal and licensed. Bish bash bosh. Happy days. <laughs> when I was in Spain a good few years ago with my, my two brothers, I can't remember the year. It was many, many years ago. We, I remember it well, actually. We were going around some other dodgy shops, <laughs> looking at old video games, and I came across this bad boy. What is that? It is a... 20, it's, no, sorry, it's a super 28 in 1 Game Boy cartridge. Let's have a look. Have a look at it. From the pictures, what, what games can you see on there? So we've got Toy Story. Yeah. Bomberman. Yeah. Turtles. Turtles on there. So two good games already. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> some kind of fighting. Oh, is it King of Fighters? I think it is. You wow. Know, there's some, and it's got Mario Brothers. It's got Pokemon. I think the first ever Pokemon. It's got some good wow. games. Tetris, the tennis games. It's not a bad car. 
Now that is not legal. That's clearly not legal. <laughs> <laughs> I might take a picture. I might chuck it on, on Twitter. It, if you guys it says game it. at the top, doesn't it? Instead of Game Boy. It says game. It says yes. game instead of Game Boy. First giveaway. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So completely illegal. But these weren't very big in the UK, were they? The, we the, couldn't get them. No. no. We couldn't get them because Strict all the people laws, at school used to get them when they went to Spain, Malaysia, Indonesia, exactly. etc. Cetera, et cetera. When I put this, and it works. All the, actually, I think this one game, I can't remember, this one game doesn't work. It's not bad, is it? 27 games it's that work. It's not Toy Story, is it? it <laughs> Thankfully, that works. <laughs> um, look, this, I, I can picture it now. Okay, are, you ready, are you ready now to hear the story of yeah. Action 52? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Action 52. It's, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a story that goes back many, many years. Let's, remi- let's rewind to about the, the, uh, the late 80s, 1980. Rewind. Yeah. Re-rewind. <laughs> and there was a man called Vince Perry. Legend. An entrepreneur. Mm. Now he's... Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm going to talk a lot about this man, actually. But he, he, he basically had, had a son. He had a son. And he, he, got, he had a NES at home. He's an American guy. He had a NES at home. His, his son loved playing the NES games. And he felt angry paying $40, $50, $60 dollars to buy a new game for his son. You would understandable. feel angry. Understandable. Hey, you know, he's an entrepreneur. He wants to get his money worth. Yeah. So when he went to Taiwan, he saw uh, a, a, a cartridge. And this cartridge uh, obviously wasn't very legal, but it had 40 games in one. Oh, who's that at the There's door? somebody <laughs> at the door. There's somebody <laughs> at the door. There's somebody <laughs> at the door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey. Come here, Rob. Come here, Here he is. Sit down, sit down, put your things down. You went uh, halfway through, were you? Uh, about a quarter through, so take a seat. <laughs> but it's take a seat, we're continuing. It's, it's live, Rob, it's live. It's a bit like a sitcom. Yeah. Arcade Attack sitcom. Here comes Rob. I'm going to be having canned laughter to this one. <laughs> yeah. I'll rewind, I'll rewind the clock. Let's, let's pitch Rob in quickly. Imagine, okay. If I'll you wait until Rob puts down all these crinkly things. <laughs> Calm down. I'm good. I'm good. If you had the choice to buy a NES cartridge with one game or 40, what would you buy? How good are the 40 games? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. No, we're not. No, we're not. Ask, oh, ask a so question. Obviously, 40. Answer. Well, of course. And that is what Vince Perry... He had, a, he had a light bulb moment. So he bought this for his son in Taiwan. I don't know how much. Probably not a lot of money. And he bought it back. And apparently he showed all of his neighbours. And he said, look at this cartridge. 40 games in one. And the, the neighbours went crazy, apparently. What is this crazy 40 in one cartridge that it was purchased in Taiwan? I had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, not 40, but 32 in one. Oh, there you go. Near enough. Yeah, it was basically what it would do. These were basically kind of a mixture of... Uh, like kind of low-level NES games and uh, old Atari games, like prehistoric arcade games, like Ice Climber and Dig Dug, and yeah, you yeah. know things like that. Which Dig Dug, even then, no one really wanted to play, but you know <laughs> they were there. Okay, there you go. I, I can't speak exactly what's on that forty-one game cartridge. We we don't know really. Let's be honest. But it gave Vince Perry an idea. Mm. How about if someone in America? made a licensed, legal, let's say a multi-cart cartridge for, for, for punters. That is a great idea. <laughs> it is a great idea. Mm. It's a great idea. Because obviously back in America, you know, the NES was huge, the biggest console by far. Sega wasn't really making too many inroads in, in America at the time. And NES was ruling. And he thought, this, 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 could, this, could bl- this is an amazing opportunity to make a ridiculous amount of money. Mm. So he... he I like Vince a lot. I'm going to defend him a bit here, but he didn't really know about the video game industry. He just he he had a good idea. I like the idea. We, we agree. Yeah, we like the idea. But he didn't know how to make a video game. <laughs> <laughs> he took his idea uh, and he got some investors. It apparently, went to Europe and Saudi Arabia, and lots of people liked his idea. Did he speak to a lawyer? I don't know. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, I'm guessing that's why he had to make his own games and not just like take yeah. whatever he wanted. Did he not foresee early on the licensing issues? And no, 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 because I don't think he really knew uh, the the industry too well. If I'm being honest, um, he basically after that he he's a mysterious person. Good old Vince Perry. Not much is known about him. I think there's one or two pictures on the internet that that that. Uh, that, 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 that show wow, man. he has like two pictures on the internet. Like we've, <laughs> we've already got about probably a hundred between the, the, the well, more than, more than between the four of it's us. Crazy. But he's he's a very mysterious person, and apparently, I think he sadly died about two or three years ago. So he's not. No, no, no serious. 
Yeah, and it, oh, again, no. not much is known about him. And he, he gets a bad rap because of the infamous Action 52. Oh, uh, yeah. And a, a few years ago, if you tried to track him down, he wanted to, many people tried to ask him about Action 52 because it's such an infamous story. They'd literally be told this simple message. Why do you want to know this? If you find a few contacts and you get, think you're getting close, you're literally asked, why do you want to know this? And that's all you... That's all you got. I think he's worried the lawyers might be after him. Ah. There you go. There you go. But, but sadly, he, he's not with us anymore. And mm. um, Rest in peace. No, yeah, part of this podcast is to defend him a little bit because like, he made some mistakes. He made a few mistakes, but... Which I'm sure you'll be going into in detail. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, I will go over them in detail, but I'm, I'm, there's always going to be a little angle where I defend him, I think. Look, it's a good idea. He came up with this idea. He had that 41 in game cartridge and he, he, he got the funding. He got the funding to make this game. He had pressure to make this game. Who would he hire? Programmers. Programmers. But he didn't want to spend a lot of money on these programmers. Oh, <laughs> <my rubbish programmers. laughs> he had no experience in making games. He wanted people that would make his games cheap, quickly, with little fuss. Yeah, it's a good idea still. <laughs> Basically, he wasn't willing to pay a ridiculous amount of money out. Now, look, he apparently rented out a, um, a recording studio. It's part of his offices, and lots, lots of business ventures of his were, were run there. And he bumped into a, 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 a person called Mario Gonzalez. Ah, Mario. Now, we like Mario. We like him a lot, actually. Is he still with us? He's still. He's not just with us. He's actually given us an interview as well, of course. Oh, yeah. The doy. <laughs> <laughs> now... Apparently, uh, Mario overheard Vince Perry talking about how he needs programmers to make games. He said, oh, he put his hand up, I imagine, oh, I've got some experience. But you know, I think Mario would be the first to admit little experience. He's just finished university. He's done a little bit of programming. And he said, look, we, we can, I can make a video game. And Vince Perry said, hmm, right on my doorstep. This could be an opportunity. Um, look, I've got a little question. I was, Please check out the, uh, the the interview to, to, to read all the questions. But here's a question I asked good old Mario. I said, please can you share with our readers or, or listeners the story of how you met Vince Perry and how the opportunity first arrived to work on the infamous Action 52 game cart. Are you ready for this? Hmm. Uh, this, is, this is obviously Mario speaking. I'd been working a part-time job while attending college as a sound engineer for a small recording studio in Miami, Florida. It turned out that Vince knew the owner and would use the office space to hold meetings about uh, his business. On one occasion, I overheard Vince explain how his son had purchased a Nintendo cartridge at a flea market that bought uh, 40 games and that the neighbour had gone crazy with the excitement. Vince knew what the games were pirated and that he could not legally launch any type of business venture with pirated games, but he had a better idea. Vince wanted to use the hardware and or tech used to make the cartridge and create 52 original games. 52! This is what got my attention. I told Vince that a few of my friends and me were into making games and that it sounded like a great opportunity for me. This sparked Vince's uh, interest, but he said he wanted proof. I assume he banged the door, banged banged, banged the table right there. He wanted proof. (laughs) I contacted my friends and we made a a, a Tetris clone called Megatris. (gasps) Now, they didn't make this on the NES. They made this on the Amiga 500. (gasps) Uh, here you go last bit of the, the, the question Vince was impressed with the graphics and sound of the Amiga and agreed to hire us for the project there you go great story um, so there you go Mario, they sound like pros they <laughs> sound like pros Vince what? is the kind of pro clearly who has business meetings in recording studios oh, God, that's, <laughs> that's that's pro that's pro that, that's multitasking he's into different things mm-hmm. now look what is the problem about making a game on the Amiga as opposed to the NES what, what's, what's the problem with doing that well the Amiga is more powerful wasn't of, it of course so, so obviously Vince got this copy of Megatris showed his investors and they were very impressed oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them all. this is on a Nintendo what? Well, I don't know if he, spoke that, he gave that too much information, but they were very impressed and said, this guy, Mario and his mates, were quite impressed. They were going to hire these guys up. And I think the investors were getting more and more confident. Vince's confidence kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> <laughs> it is madness. Now, look, obviously Mario had a bit of experience making the Amiga. So good old Vince. He sent Vin, uh, Mario and his two friends. Uh, I, should, I should name her, actually. Uh, Javier and... Um, Where's the other guy's name? I'll, I'll come back to it in a minute, actually. Uh, Albert and Javier, Javier they, they joined, the, the, joined the group. Vince Perry sent them on a game developer course how to program on the NES. This course was for two weeks. A two-week wow. course how to make games. 
Wow. <laughs> that, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's two weeks enough time to learn how to program, make games on the NES, do you think? Um, no. Well, no. If you're Vince Perry, time is money. Ain't got time. <laughs> Ain't got time. You've got time There's to 52... learn to program. Just do it. There's 52 games to make. Yeah, exactly. There's 52 games to make. <laughs> Chop, um, just towards the end of this and just at the start of actually making Action 52 or actually how long do you reckon they were given two weeks they've had a two weeks course how long were they given to make Action 52 from start to finish two weeks a year like not, not a year six months not six months four months not four months three months uh, what? to make 52 games yeah. oh. about 90 days <laughs> so four week yeah yeah that explains a lot. Whole games. Whole <laughs> games. You know, not... This, this brand spanking new games. 52 original games on one cartridge. Is that possible? <laughs> what is the average time... It, at, at, back in the late 80s, or I think this was actually 1991, actually, but in the very early 90s or late 80s, what was the average time to make one sort of low-end like game? game? Like half a year, like a year. It was about sort of four, five or six months. Yeah, it's yeah. about half a year. And this, this is like the a really, really good ones. Yeah, like a year. yeah ex- exactly. That's crazy, isn't it? That is pretty madness. Ah, this is madness. But Mario had a friend, didn't he? He, 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 he had a friend. Did he have a friend? He's got loads of friends. <laughs> loads of friends. And, uh, Mario, we're not trying to sound patronised, and we really thank you for doing our interview. Now we had a, there's a, there's another developer that joined the group. So there's there's obviously Mario and his, his teammates currently, and a secret developer joined. Ooh. A secret developer. Now his name secret developer. his name is nowhere on the cartridge. Apparently, <gasps> wow. he signed What's no the contracts. Who is? Ah, to the show. Alan Smithy of programmers. <laughs> Whether he's ashamed of the game or not, well, actually, I think he's quite proud of it, but he's, I think he likes the mystery. This secret developer known as Dev4, Developer4, <laughs> released a blog, didn't he, a few years ago? <laughs> and this blog literally tells you the whole story about Action 52. So if you want to know more about it, I'm not really doing this full justice, probably. If you want to know all about the story, about the, how it started and what, what actually happened, check out blog.action52prototype.com. And it's a really interesting blog but he won't reveal his name, wow. Dev4. Wow. And he, he joined and he was part of the team. He did help out his mates. And yeah, he, 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 at the start, he was just there to oversee what his friends were doing, but he, he, he was trained up and he became a fully fledged member of the team. So four people to make 52 games <laughs> in three <laughs> months. <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah. One thing we can't accuse Mario and his team of being as lazy though. They were working ridiculous hours. I bet they were doing yeah. like 20 hour days. They, Exactly. Most days would start from 11 p.m. Uh, 11 a.m. Sorry, um, and they would finish um, maybe at 11 at night. But most times they work even the way to 6 a.m. At ridiculous hours most That's days. Crazy. They were working, working, working to the bone. And apparently in this recording studio there was no lights. It's all padded out. There's, there's no sort of windows, so you wouldn't know. If you, the days would turn into nights, and you would never know. Oh, wow. that's not good for you. Yeah, it's not good for you. It's not the healthiest thing. But hey, next door there was a donut shop and a coffee shop, so that kept them going, apparently. <laughs> there you go. I'm guessing it's not too different from how Apple make their things in China these days. <laughs> oh, come on! Moving on quickly! On. I said the word guessing, so we can't be sued. <laughs> yeah. Now look, Vince Perry obviously was excited. He, 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 knew, he had trust in his, his four developers. And he wouldn't pop in that often. He'd, pop, he'd show his face now and then in the office. He'd provide the old donuts and coffee. And, 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 and he'd lead the team uh, up to the work. Is that, that good? Would you trust? No, you need a no. director. You can't just go, hello, no. go for it, and then bye. Apparently he'd phone up often and get updates. All right, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> really good. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure that's how No Man's Sky was made as well. Quite possibly. <laughs> Probably more than the four developers that you'd hope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, another question I asked Mario. I said, I asked this. Action 52 seems like such an ambitious project set within a highly, a highly pressured environment. How is it possible to create 52 games under such pressured circumstances? Are you ready for this? Go on. Uh, he basically, this is what Mario says. When initially agreeing to the project with Vince, he never indicated that we were on a tight schedule or any time frame for that matter. <laughs> what an entrepreneur. What? He was o- it was only when we were given the contracts to sign that all this was laid out. In our excitement to actually get the opportunity to work on a game for Nintendo, we said, what the heck, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and we were on board. Uh, Vince flew us to Salt Lake City, Utah, where we received one week trip. It says one week here, one week training in the Nintendo Delta. <laughs> oh, no, he gets half and half. He does. Half. Uh, so one week training to work on a Star Wars game. 
I knew the task at hand was very daunting given the time constraints, so I came up with the idea of creating a handful of engines and a template for the graphics yeah. to facilitate a smoother development cycle. That makes so much sense. It, it does. It really does, doesn't it? So, can I ask, when you say a Star Wars game, is yeah. this going to be Star on Wars Action 52? No. I think when they were doing their training, I guess they were helping out, maybe oh, okay. testing and making it, working on a Star Wars game. I, I'm not completely sure. Uh, but hey, here we go. Um... We still spent countless hours at the music studio, now converted to a game design studio, mm. and got very little sleep with, while surviving on coffee and donuts. The music portion was the most difficult. I had to compose each song on external equipment, dump the music and data, and then manually input the data into the programming. Overall, the guys and I got along great, and we made a great team. Great team. Madness, isn't it? They, they delegated well. I think Mario was doing the... the so, he was doing the sort of development and the music and the other three, I think one was in the art, one was doing the sort of um, the graphics and so forth. And they were working hard, to be fair. And actually, I'll speak more about the games later, but it's about... There's 52 games in there, truthfully, uh, but they're, they're very similar to each other. So there's about four or five different types of games, you can tell. And you can see, hey, you can't blame them. Can you blame Mario for doing that? No, because, uh, you know, it's sounding like an opportunity of a lifetime, isn't it? Make a game for Nintendo. Getting those licenses off Nintendo back in the day was pretty tricky. I we'll, how... we'll come to that later. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> how much do you think Mario and his team were given, like an advance, to make this? It's, all right, it's a good opportunity to, 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 to get your hands right in making a games console, but how much do you reckon they were paid for their hard work? Five dollars. A bit come more on. than that. A bit <laughs> more than that. For three months of work. Yeah, I, and it, uh, apparently this is the only money they ever received, even though it was an advance. Uh, as soon as they finished the game, bish bash bosh, that, that was their... Uh, and how many of them was there for? Yeah. I'm going to say $5,000. Uh, a bit less. A grand each. A bit more. $1,500 each. So, wow. more oh. than 5000 Yes. Uh, math has gone out the window today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, six grand. Yeah, one thousand, one thousand five hundred dollars each. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six grand. Okay, do you mean the total? Oh, yes. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't mean. I didn't. He said total. My bad. <laughs> maths again. Sorry, maths. Anyway, carry on. we're not pretty. Was how many games from that game again? Action fifty. I forget. Bad joke. Uh, bad joke. Sixty-four. 40. <laughs> now look. Apparently, they had to almost not beg for that money, but uh, but they had to almost persuade Vince to give them that money initially because he was a little bit reluctant. Well, he wasn't going to pay him in advance. No, <laughs> I think he was going to wait till to, to the money started rolling in. Really. <laughs> Which, he's an entrepreneur, uh, that's what entrepreneurs do. He's an entrepreneur. But actually, because... <clears throat> I'm building a list of different words to describe him with. Why? I no. Do not speak ill of the dead. <laughs> I won't. Um, no, and I, uh, he, when you hear some of these crazy... I say crazy, I'm more amazing ideas like you might change your tune, kid. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now look, he, he was getting more excited by the day, Vince. He thought, Action 52 is going to be a major success. It's coming along nicely. I'm getting good updates from, from my developers. Why stop there? He had ambitions... Well, some of them came true, to be fair, to make a Mega Drive version. To make a SNES version. <laughs> he even had plans to, to move away from video games and, and develop a cartoon series, but we'll come to that later. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine this. You've got three months to make 52 games. You don't want much distraction, do you? You, you want to get on with it with no, no distractions. But apparently halfway through... Vince, I can see it now. Vince probably turned up and he had another brainwave, didn't he? Of course he does. Oh, He's God. like full of brainwaves. <laughs> he had noticed that at the time, what, what cartoon was huge and big in the 80s at that time, do you think? Late 80s. Turtles? Bingo. Oh, that? Yeah, bingo. Oh. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was all the craze. Kids were lapping it up. The games were popular. The, the cartoon was huge. Loved that. What did Vince think of doing them? He, he thought of making his own characters. Oh wow! Vince made battle toads. <laughs> <laughs> better, misses, better. Misses, yeah. <laughs> Instead of mutant turtles, ninja turtles, he thought that he would use a cat character. Characters. Oh, Jaguar? Not Jaguars. <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> Cheetahs. What? He thought he came up with the idea that instead of doing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he would he would he would make his own cartoon series called the Cheetah Men. Not the Teenage Mutant Ninja Cheetahs. No, they are Cheetah Men with ninja skills apparently. Okay. And I'll go I'll go in a bit more detail about their names and their skills later. If that's cool. A video game style cat character. Who would have thought it? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> now look, he had this idea, and he thought I've got this idea for Cheetah Men. 
we need it in Action 52. Not only will it be in Action 52, it will be the big blockbuster... T- uh, I mean, it will take up one of the 52 games. So was... you're, you're one fifty second of the way there. Exactly. <laughs> but this was going to be the there big... There maths. There's something for you, maths. <laughs> well done. Well done, maths <laughs> master. He, no, he thought that this would be the main selling point. The cheater men would be, yeah, all right, one of the 52 games, but the main game, the selling point. Oh, man. He, I, can just, I can see it now. He walks into the, into the office and says, look, guys, stop what you're doing. I've got another crazy idea. Cheetah men, I want this made. They must have been like, hooray. Yeah, I'm sure there was a few pins that didn't drop that day. <laughs> a few things were said, I'm sure. But no, to be fair to Mario and the team, they did it. They created a game called the Cheetah Men. Tell they us did. about the Cheetah Men, Adrian. Mm, we want to know more. I'll come to that later if that's all right. I'll come to that later. Because it, but I'll, take, you tease. Would, I'll tell you a little bit more. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll throw another thing out here. If you, buy, if you buy a cartridge of Action 52, you would get a free Cheetah Men comic. That's pretty wow. amazing. And this comic would advertise the fact that there'll be future comics. And there'll be future action figures you could buy. And also, there'll be a cartoon series with, quote, Disney quality graphics. <laughs> all on, or animation, I should say, all on the way. How exciting is that? How much... Are- I'm not, I'm, I, might, I might ruin more, more of your podcast, but do you know how much one of those magazines would, would be worth now? I think it's worth a lot of money. Because that's, that's good, thanks, man. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think it would cost a lot of Mila. I, I do. Sorry, there's no real numbers there. That's okay. Guys. I'll Google it later. <laughs> Google, Google. I've worked for people like Dave before. What? Like, kind of small business owners. Like Vince, it's, uh, Vince, you mean? Vince, yeah. Vinny. Sorry, I got sidetracked. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We just, that was a big. That was a big revelation. That was a big. Re- <laughs> we're all a bit, I thought you were going to be a big, a big story. Just, then, just Rob. taking it. In. That, that's where Keith is going to insert the laugh track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The rest Definitely. of us. The rest of us work for Dumb Man. Rob worked for a man who was a bit like Vince. Well, so. I, I would, guys, I, again, my timeline's might not be completely straight here, but I reckon about three quarters away through development. So let's say maybe two months into it, Mario had to drop out. Mario left the TV. No. But he's like the he was like the King Wizard. He was, he was sort of he was Mario. the boss. He was the boss. King he Captain. put things together. And he was the main music maestro, wasn't he? He was putting all things together. Why did nicely. he have to leave? Can well, tell us? it's a few he had a few personal issues to deal with, I think, with his girlfriend. Oh. So I, I don't know all the details and I don't think it's really our place to speak about that. Of course, but he had to leave, but Vince wasn't too impressed. <laughs> he wasn't too impressed, apparently. Um basically he left and it basically meant uh, there was no music for many, many games. So many games had no music. So what's, what would you do if you've got like a month to finish things off? You've got your own stuff going on graphics. What's the best? What, what could you do? What, music-wise? Yeah. To fill the music yeah. thing? Uh, reuse the tracks? You could do that. Or you could steal tracks illegally from other games and just chuck <laughs> it in. <laughs> no, but that, that goes against the whole Nintendo market quality. Well, we'll come to that later. We'll see if they <laughs> yeah. get that market quality, <laughs> won't we? Uh, so they basically... Uh, the other three members, they, they just saved a bit of time. They, they stole music from other games, including, I think, Activision's The Music Studio. They just took it without any sort of... Uh, d- without any you know, agreements or whatnot. <sighs> oh, I don't know. But the game was complete. They, ma- they, they made Action 52 pretty much on the deadline, give or take a few days, apparently. It was done. They, they did their job. That is an achievement. Hmm. You know what? Fair play. 52 original games in one cartridge oh. in just about three months. <clears throat> Original with inverted commas. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you make 52 games in three months, do you have a lot of time for game testing? Um, <laughs> no, not really. No, 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 no. Do you have a lot of time to check for bugs? Nope. Not really. No, 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 no. So, yes, there are 52 games in this cartridge. Not all of them work. <laughs> okay. Some of them don't load up at all properly at all. Some of them you can basically never complete, and some of them are just unplayable. <laughs> it's it has been dubbed many many times as the worst we've, game ever made. We've all had a go. Mm. <laughs> we've all had a go. I have. I have not just had a go. I have played all fifty-two games. That, man, you deserve some kind of award. Yeah. Have, look at my eyes. The I'm ones that can load up and weren't unplayable. <laughs> Oh, actually, I was, when I was going through the list, when I played the game that just wouldn't load up, I was like, yes, that's to play that one. <laughs> that Were one you off. up all night doing this? I'll tell you what, it, I, days, weeks, I, almost like three months of my life. <laughs> I don't know how long it Did was. Did you lock your, yourself away in a padded sound room? Rocking back and forth, Action yeah. 52. Vince. Coffee, <laughs> coffee and donuts. <laughs> well, look, the game had been finished. Vince Perry was proud, wasn't he? 
Oh, give it to him, you know. He did it. <laughs> he did it. He sent it to Nintendo, and guess what happened? They rejected it. Reject. <laughs> they did not give it the seal of approval. No. It was not a. It was not given a proper licensed NES title ever. Mm-mm. Oh, but I thought it was. He, oh, okay. he still made it. He still produced the cartridges. <laughs> mm. But he had to find other ways of selling, didn't he? Other ways to promote it. <laughs> he, he didn't get that seal of approval, that st- Nintendo stamp on his cartridge. But then, how did he... Okay, well, tell us, because oh. I just I don't know how he would have done it. Well, look, do you want to hear some... He's no, I like Vince, he's no quitter. Other people would have quit long before this, wouldn't they? He kept going, he kept going. Right, are you ready for this? He, he first produced flies and leaflets about Action 52. Why not? It's a good way to get to your target audience. He also commissioned, I don't know how much this would have cost him, I've seen it, it's on YouTube, an iconic TV advert starring the Cheetah Men. I've seen it. Great, great advert. I like it. Yeah. Oh, I'm not seeing it. It is quite good, actually, oh, isn't it? Oh, you guys I'll have to look haven't it up. been YouTubing enough. Yes. It is good. It is good. It's, I like it. I say to you, chap, shouldn't you go on a diet? Are you talking to me? Hmm, maybe these guys would make these holes bigger. I could fit easy, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man. I'll help you out. No worries, no. Come on, guys, we have work to do. We come from the Action 52 game world where every game is... Yeah, we're talking action and lots of it. We got space, dragon, adventure, even war games. Yeah, dude, we even got rescue games, and man, they're smooth like ice. Hey, what about you guys? Oh, yeah, we're in there, too. The Cheetah Man. Yes, but that's another story. If you want the ultimate game challenge, you have to get Action 52. Yeah, it's so cool. 52 games in one, and you can even play it on Nintendo. Man, it's awesome. Get yours now. Now playing at a store near you. One of my favourite things to help boost the sales was an in-game competition. In-game competition? Now, apparently, if you play the game Ooze, which is quite early on the list, I think it's like the third or fourth game, um, and if you complete the game Ooze, and if you take a picture of this uh, this random code, your personal code that comes up, and you send it to Vince Perry or Active Enterprises, you might have the chance to win $104,000. That's a very specific <laughs> amount is, of money. $104,000. Apparently, half of it was for your um, education or like a, you know, like uh-huh. American degree, and the other half was cash. Oh, I th- wow. I think chance is the optimal word in that sentence. Um, yeah. I actually yeah. like that idea, but Do you guys... Didn't want to win it? Well... I don't know if this was a masterstroke or, or, or I don't think it was. I think it's just just bad programming. You can't complete ooze. <laughs> <laughs> you only get the code if you complete level five on ooze. And you can't. You can't get past level two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but obviously people have looked through looked they looked through the cartridge. They looked, they've gone through the files and they found the code. And apparently your personal code is the same code that everyone else would get in the game. So you can still send it off today. Uh, if do you want to know what the code is? Yeah, go on. 783H9J0P2R4A2C7S. What does that spell out? I don't know. So if, you send, them, if you send that code into Active Enterprises, you might still be able to win that 104,000. I'm sending it now, mate. <laughs> yeah. How mad is that? Look, I like those strategies. I think fair play to him. So Active Enterprises is still a going concern? No. Oh. No, no, no. I, if you send that code into Active Enterprises, you wouldn't get a reply. Trust me, unfortunately. <laughs> Now, look, actually, these crazy ideas of Vince Perry actually meant he sold a few cartridges. Mm. He, he made quite a few initial batches. He sold quite a few. Now, if you woke up on, let's say, Christmas morning with this cartridge and you played it, what do you think you'd tell your friends? Come round, play it. Yeah. Look at all these 52 games I have. <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, sorry. I think more likely it would be, do you want to swap games? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this got this awesome game. Do you want to buy it? Word of mouth destroyed Action 52. They sold quite a few initially, mm. but word of mouth quickly got round. When was it rounds. released? Uh, it released in 1991. Okay. 1991. Um, oh. it, 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 wasn't, it, it was quickly dubbed. There was no internet back then, obviously, but it was quickly dubbed one of the worst games ever. Don't buy it. Timing is bad because 91, 92 was awesome for gaming. Of course it was. was. <laughs> or Action 52. Oh. Now, guys, how much do you reckon Action 52 sold for back in 1991? Well, I know the answer, so I'm not going to say. In 1991? Yes. In pounds? Oh, I dollars. know the answer. Dollars, please. I dollars. this earlier. No, okay, well, let Rob so guess. Well, also, no, yes, let Sorry. Rob guess. We will, we will. Listeners, guess as well. I've Shout just realised I, I did read it earlier. 
I know what I want the I want the answer to be fifty two dollars. <laughs> that would make sense. I'm gonna say twenty five. Wow! Yikes! Wow! 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 Are you ready for this? Go on. Go on. Well, no. The fair play to Vince. If you make fifty two games, you can sell a bit more than normal cartridges, can't you? Definitely. When you say a bit more than a normal cartridge, <laughs> what do you mean, just Adrian? Say he sold it initially for two hundred dollars. What? <laughs> One cartridge would cost two hundred dollars. That is the same price as a SNES. <laughs> I don't know. When did the SNES come out? Is that the same sort of time? Yeah, yeah. yeah Action fifty two or a SNES? Action fifty two or a SNES? Yeah, but, 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 but you get a SNES, you only get like one box yeah, game. Yeah, one game. Ah, yes. So you're fifty one games down. You're fifty one games down. Exactly. So. Plus, if you want to, if if maths is gonna keep oh, going maths. up today, yeah, uh, that's less than four dollars a game. Bargain. That's maths. See, our maths has improved <laughs> ridic- ridiculously over time. We, we had to do something. We had so to do four dollars per game, in principle, is not too bad. How much is Action Fifty Two worth now? All oh, crikey! Wow, uh, a lot. And actually, I, I think the four developers were given like their own sort of prototype copy, and they're they're worth hundreds of thousands. Uh, not hundreds of thousands, but ridiculous amount of money. They could be worth thousands. Dead Four sold it recently on eBay for lots and lots. Of, I can't remember the figure. Top there you go. Lots and lots. Lots and lots of me. It's amazing what lots people buy. Oh, lots and lots. It's lot. the A and M version of God Save the Queen, but for games and terrible <laughs> yeah. instead of being really good. Ah, uh, no. There's a few twists to come. Now, at, at this stage, most people would give up, wouldn't they? If you've been, if, if if you if you had a, a shipment of cartridges not selling, not doing much, what would you do? <sighs> Would you throw him I'm down? assuming I'm assuming he hasn't made a profit at this point. No. Well, if you no, no. at this time, at this time when when when. You know, they're, they're selling two hundred dollars or whatnot. Active enterprises were in ridiculously bad financial trouble. You bury thousands of copies in the desert. <laughs> Being there, done. Yeah. 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 We don't. Yeah, we, we, we're not. They're not Atari. This is active enterprise. We're, we're, talking about. we're talking about ambitious people here. Now, look, good old Vince Perry. He didn't give up, did he? He had a few other things he had up his sleeve. You ready for this? Go on. This man's got long sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. Possibly he was in such financial difficulty, he just he had to think of ways to get the money back. That, that's what I'm assuming. I don't know for certain, but fair enough. Make so he, he commissioned a new Action 50 game to be made on the Mega Drive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 16 bit power. Um, he apparently rehired Albert and Javier, Javier but Mario wasn't anywhere to be seen anymore, unfortunately. But they were, they were hired alongside a proper uh, games developing company <laughs> called Farsight Technologies to make this game. There you go, it's going to get better. Now, actually, I haven't really had a good chance to play Action 52 on the Mega Drive. We but, have. But, but, well, I just, <laughs> yeah. I just report I've heard the games aren't too bad. They're playable. Uh, They're better quality than NES ones. And actually... They are, actually. Uh, actually, I, know that's I haven't played hard. the NES ones, so you, did you play yeah, both? Yeah, do you want I to know... chip in for a bit, then? What do you think of Action 52 on the Mega Drive, on the Genesis? Do you want me to do like a, like a, like a mini comparison? Because I haven't really talked about the NES games. Can I... Well, sh- shall I do the NES games first? Yeah, you, you talk about those first, well, and then we'll do I won't go through all of them. Yeah. So that was the first thing he did. He commissioned a Mega Drive. He also had ideas for a SNES on as well, of course. Mm. Um, he... Well, look at this. Um... Again, I don't want to ruin what you're going to say about the Mega Drive okay, game, fine. but yes, it was better quality, but the bad name of the NES sort of just transferred to the mm. Mega Drive. It didn't sell well at all. Again, things were looking dire. In 1993, Perry had one more roll of the dice, I think. He, he was Anyone else would have quit by now, so I respect his ambition. So in 1993, he said the following things to, to, to investors and people that had listened to him. The Cheetah Men cartoon was still going to be made. That yes. would make the difference. Yes. You know? The figures, the action figures were on their way, apparently. Oh he even claimed they were gonna they were designing an animatronic Cheetah Man costume. Right. So I don't know if someone could get inside it, but I'm I'm thinking kind of a Terminator kind of Cheetah Man <laughs> that could be brought along to events for promotion purposes. Yes. How cool would that be? I haven't seen the Cheetah Man, Man advert, but I did look this up on YouTube, on Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. And the Cheetah Men basically look like Chester Cheetos' older brothers yeah. with weapons. And with the white judo suits on as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yes. Um, there you go. So apparently the car team was coming. And also, and I, I, Vince, whether, again, this, I'm trying to defend him a lot here, but I think this is one, one craziness too far for me. He also proposed for, for, for investors to get involved that he was working on. <laughs> A handheld console. 
Oh. And this console was going to be called, um, where is it? It's going to be called the Action, um, the Action Games Master. So he's going to make his own handheld console. Look at I, listeners, you can't see it unfortunately, but Google look at it. it look at this thing. It looks flipping awesome. Wow! <laughs> it was going to be compatible with NES games, so you could play the action figure cart on it. Okay, there. I'm sure Nintendo would love that. SNES, you could play SNES games. I, they'll doubly be pleased about that. And Genesis games. Oh, this <laughs> Sega. Yeah, what? curious face. Wow! And no one's ever made something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, this is 1993. That's 1993. What, that's, that's what we all wanted as kids. It's an ugly thing, if when you look at the picture. It's a strange I, shape. But... Describe it for the listeners. <laughs> the screen, I mean, it's hard to know the proportions, but the, uh, would doesn't... you even call that handheld? The screen is quite small. It, it's more it like looks a... like a Game Boy Advance sat in a massive steering wheel. Yes, That's it a does. good description, yeah. It's pretty close. Thank you. Whether, <laughs> whether Vince Perry could actually make this thing is questionable at best. But... Did he do a prototype anyway? No, I think oh. it's just a picture. <laughs> I'll tell you what it looks like with that little screen and the whole like kind of wide body. It looks like one of the evil Robocops they made in Robocop 2. Yes. Oh, that yeah. malfunctioned and didn't <laughs> yeah. work. Yeah. There you go then. It could have been successful. But the makers of Robocop would have been after him as well. I think at this point people had kind of grown tired of Vince's <laughs> ideas and <laughs> ambitions and I would have chucked a few quid as well. I I would have done. I want that, that, that action games master, god damn it. But anyway, uh, unfortunately, Active Enterprises soon closed down. Oh. Um, the company, uh, it, Vince disappeared into the sunset. Mu- not much was ever heard of him again, apparently, for many, many years. Like I said earlier, guys, if you ever tried to contact him, it was nigh on impossible. And I think it was reported only a few years ago that he sadly died. So, look, yes, he had some crazy ideas. But original ideas. I think we can't deny that. Is that, mm, that fair? Yeah. Can't knock people for being ambitious. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Um, he he left warehouses full of unsold Action 52 carts. Oh. You know, they've since gone the black market. They're, they're going for lots of money these days. And actually, a little twist as well. In 1996, uh, Cheetah Men 2 was discovered in a warehouse. One, oh, crikey. One yeah, yeah, thousand... I've this story. 1,500 copies of Cheetah Men 2, which no one knew about until 1996. (laughs) They would have been made many years before that. Can you imagine that? Stumbling across Cheetah Men 2. Cheetah Men 2, like, wow! Now, this game was so buggy, it's even more buggy than most of the games on Action 2, apparently. But I've played I've given this a NES cartridge. It is another NES cartridge, yeah. Um, And uh, uh, the person who discovered discovered these cartridges, I think he gave it to developers, they tied it up again, and he sort of resold it on eBay and stuff like that. He's made some money out of it. Hmm. So there you go. Look, I'm not. That's kind of the first part of the discussion done. Mm. Uh, do you guys want to say anything about Vince before I go and rattle on a few of the games? What a legend! I think the ir- the ironic thing about this is that 25 years on, Nintendo actually made the concept work with a classic NES. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's true, actually. But they didn't go for 52, did they? Was it 20, 21, or anything? No, there mm-hmm. was there was 30, wasn't there? In the... Was it 30 in there? Yeah, less than the. It's 30 on the NES and the SNES Classic's got 21, isn't it? Well, 22 if it could be Star Fox 2. I oh, think that... 21 is Star Fox yeah. 2, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's Vince 1 Nintendo 0. Really. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, that's dark as hell. Well, there's 22 more games. Yeah, but you've played them. <laughs> <laughs> I. I've played more than 21 games recently. I've played all 52. <laughs> like I told you guys, I tried all 52 games out. And look, before I... I'm not going to go through all 52. That would just be annoying. But I'm you should pick... put that on your CV now as well. I survived Action 52. Yeah. Can you imagine? It shows your, t- your tenacity and determination. I t- I, actually, I almost gave up. I thought, oh, no. Masochistic I I, I, I I managed to at least play each game just for a few minutes at least. You know, and I, No, there's a few good games in there. Oh, you know, okay games. But what I like about it, as soon as you load the cartridge up or... If you play it on the old emulator, you know. <clears throat> um, you're given some great intro music and it says Lights, Camera, Action 52. That's what, and it's actually pretty good. I, I quite like it. The music, even though some of it was copied illegally, <laughs> is actually probably the biggest plus point of Action 52. Some of the music's pretty good. Mm. And kudos to Mario there. Yeah. yeah. Kudos to Mario. Good stealing there. Where and, did they and Mario's. <laughs> well done, Mario. Where did they steal it from? Well, the music. So I think there was some uh, Activision games. I think some Atari ST games. I think there's like a, mu- a, a music maker, Activision, put together, uh, and they just stole samples from that and chucked in the games. So there you go. 
Right, there's there's lots of games. I'm not going to go through all 52, but the first game you're given, it's like a weird menu system. I don't know if you guys remember it. There's like three screens. You press, press select to change the menu screen. One to 52. And there's spelling mistakes everywhere. Some of the games have got ridiculous spelling mistakes. It's <laughs> crazy. And the first game, I don't know why they chose it, was Fire Breathers. As soon as you load it up, You've got two dragons on the screen. It's just breathing fire and you just wander around well, breathing fire at each You other. wander around thinking, what's going on here? It's a two-player game. It's only a two-player game. So yeah. it took a while. What's going on here? Yeah, you just kind of just do nothing. If there's no one else playing, you just kind of run. I don't think around. that should have been the first game to showcase Action 52. But okay. what do I know, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, Illuminator I quite liked, the third game. It's uh, quite an original game, actually. And you, it's a simple platformer, but you can turn the lights off. And if you, or the lights go off randomly, it's pitch black, and you have to remember where you are, and you have to go up and down ladders and shoot, shoot enemies. But, and then the lights come back on again. I think that's quite original, actually. Who that's not a bad play, idea. Yeah. Who doesn't want to play games in the dark? <laughs> exactly. Look, after that, there's so many shoot 'em ups, it was ridiculous. Like mm. G Force Fighter. Um, they're either side scrolling shooters or, um, or vertical shooters. Mm. That's pretty much most of the games on them. Yes, I can see why they did it, but it got so annoying after a while. Ooze as well, we spoke about Ooze earlier, the game you could not finish, which is a very, very, really poor platformer. Look, when you jump in a platform game, if you if you press jump and right, what should happen? You jump to the right. Not in Ooze. <laughs> <laughs> it's you get your, stuck. <laughs> you, 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 you jump straight up. You've got, to, you've got to almost do the opposite. You know when you use your platform game so you press right and up? You, you've got to do the other way around. It's so crazy. It's just not playable. Silver Sword was a commando style shooter. Um, just uh, some, cra- just going for a few. Ah, oh, Dam Busters. Some really weird. You, you can try like a weird sort of red bear. It looks like you're throwing cookies at like green zombie bears. It's just just madness. <laughs> the the Sith game on the on the cartridge. I want to spend a little bit of time on because I think it's the best game. It's called Haunted Hills of Wentworth, or just Haunted Hills on the title. Mm. You know what? I actually played it for. A lot more time than the other games. Like five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes, maybe. Well but no, it's it's very similar to Castlevania. No way as good as Castlevania. <laughs> very it's, similar in what sense? In the sense you're in a haunted house, you have to shoot ghosts and jump over platforms. Uh, you know what? It was actually very playable. The, the ju- they sorted the jumping aspects out in this platformer. The graphics weren't half bad. And actually, you were controlling a female uh, character, which is quite rare back then. You know? So, you know what? Actually, if I was going to give any credit... To any of the games, said maybe give it a try. Haunted Hills is probably the one I'd try out. Actually, it was, it's not bad. Konami are going to be onto us, by the way. I don't think they're going to be very happy. Why do you think that? Because <laughs> we're giving a comparison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it was quite. As, it's just almost <laughs> as good. <laughs> um, wow, there's a game like Mike called Micro Mike, and I kid you not, it seemed just like Flappy Birds. Wow. Had, yeah, a little bit like Flappy Bird. They but, created Flappy Bird before anyone else did. But you're controlling someone called Mike, and you have to sort of, instead of jumping, you have to move up and down. It's really quick. I just died in the first Flappy week. Mike. The problem is, when I play in these games, you would die almost in the first two seconds because they're, they're some of them are so quick, like in a, a, a sort of racing game or a, a shooting. Uh, the Battletoads Jet Stage. Worse. I'm sure it's worse than that. You, you stay still, yeah, that's hard. You, you get crashed in. Um, fuzz Power. There's a game called Fuzz Power. It's a crazy platformer, and you control a hairy foot. You are literally a foot <laughs> with a face on top of it. And if a hairdryer blows you, your hair disappears, and you're a naked foot, and it looks a tad rude, I have Ooh. to say. It doesn't look quite like a foot to be catch. That's what happens when you've got oh. people in a recording studio with no daylight for days yeah. on end, and you just start. feed them coffee and donuts. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. You start to go back. Yeah. Um, another game I quite like was called Sombreros. And... Um, it was quite. Have you, had, have you guys ever had a game of called Dogs of War? I used to play it on the Amiga quite a lot. It's a little bit like Commando, sort of a little bit. I think like yeah, I never played it. But it, it was pretty good. It's, Sombrero is like a Mexican version of that. No way is good, but again, actually relatively playable. To be fair, um, ugh, the games are just. I have to say, I didn't enjoy a lot of them. I really, really didn't. Uh, there was an interesting game called Manchester. <laughs> All right, Manchester. Okay. I don't know why it's called Manchester, but it's a beat 'em up game, uh, a little bit like maybe um, a Double Dragon kind of game, but just no way it's good. Based on, on the, the mean streets people. of Manchester. Yeah, mm. yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's no one named Gallagher walking around. Who knows? But <laughs> leave space for a laugh track there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, cheers, thanks. Um, another game I quite liked actually was a game called Billy Bob. 
Billy Bob. And actually, it was a bit of a Rick Dangerous kind of Prince of Persia sort of feel to it. And actually, no, credit where it's due, some of the sort of jumping animations and climbing animations was nowhere near Prince of Persia style, but it wasn't ridiculously far off. They put a bit of time into that game, I could tell. Um, like the last day, like game. a whole day. Look, Vince, what was... He, yes, 50, 51 games are going to be on there. What was going to be the main game? The last game. The 52nd game. Before, actually, before I talk about the 50, I know what it is. I, I, before I talk about the 52nd game, apparently, and that, there was going to be a game called Boss. And to play this game, and they had to scrap this game, you had to complete all the first 51 games, <laughs> and you access the, the, the final boss in this kind of final game. Is that a good idea? Uh, it, no, it, it makes you play the game. It, it does. But no. It seems... Are amazingly the least realistic of all the ideas you've discussed today. Do you think so? Completing, finish playing, and finishing ev- all fifty-one other games. What? How much money would I have to pay you if that was still on here to complete all the games? And bear in mind, something impossible to complete. So it's an impossible mission, you could argue. Hmm. That's a lot of money. One thousand five hundred dollars, but that <laughs> tickle your fancy. Rock. You would have to put me on a weekly wage. I think <laughs> <laughs> you would be there to the cows came home. I think actually. But anyway, boss was scrapped, and. Vince Perry got his wish. Cheetah Men was on there, wasn't it? Yo, yeah. Cheetah Men. Now, during this game, I think there's six levels in total, and you can you control one of the three Cheetah Men for every two levels. The first two levels, I believe, you're Hercules. Hercules. Then the, the other two levels, who, who else do you reckon you control? Batman. No. Ares. Uh, and my favourite Cheetah, but I never actually played as one, I never got to it, was good old Apollo. We love hey. Apollo. Um, so tell us about what are these cheetah men like? They they're badass. Tell, what why what makes Hercules different from Ares? <laughs> well, and he does not use a weapon. He has great physical strength, apparently. Ah. Whereas Ares, you say um, apparently, have you not read the comic book? <laughs> from cover to cover, <laughs> every night, Rob. <laughs> Ares has two wooden clubs, and of course, Apollo has a crossbow. A crossbow. Of course. There you go. of course. And the, the main enemy is called Dr. Morbis. Um, he's an evil geneticist, but we don't know why he's so evil. There you go. Um, look, if you want to uh, try out Action 52, it's an experience. It sure is. <laughs> Cheetah Men. <laughs> Cheetah Men, oh, I didn't really talk about it. It's like a side, it's like a, so it's kind of like a sort of double dragon sort of battle toad. It's kind like of feel. a battle toad game where there's just lots of bugs. Lots of and you bugs. You die a lot for no reason. Die, and actually, you, you climb up a ladder, you can't go up to it, so you have to go back down the ladder, go right a little bit more, so the mm. screen goes right a little bit more, go back up the ladder, you fall down pits that aren't there. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. But it's. It looks quite nice. It looks quite nice. Looks Initially, quite nice. the cheetah kind of moves kind of nice. And, I, and actually, Cheetah Men 2. Similar sort of game, better graphics, still got a few bugs in it, yeah. but they kind of tied it up and Cheetah Men 2 was going to be sort of like the, the big one, wasn't mm. it? The real one where they could tidy things up. Mm. Before I move on then, yeah. I know that Dylan and Keith had a quick go on the Mega Drive game. Mm. I've had, to, well, I have um, a little... You did top, play all 52 top, games, right? I have a top five list wow. here of games I didn't find that bad. At number five is Dino Tennis. Dino Tennis <laughs> spelt with a Y, but that had dinosaurs in. Really? Oh, that's why I didn't play it. <laughs> why? Well, Nicky saw it. My little boy saw it, and he's like, "Oh, di-. I was like, "Oh no, that's not dinosaurs." No, and I the, didn't look. You think it was dynamite? Oh, I just the why? The why? The why is there to throw? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it why did, and I missed that. Shall I tell you a bit more about Dino Tennis? Is it mm-hmm. T-Rex versus uh, tra- uh, like a pterodactyl? With the little hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's basically two nondescript dinosaurs playing tennis. Good. But the ball is not a ball. Wait, let's guess. Is it like a dinosaur Shell? egg? Dinosaur egg, good guess. Rob, have a guess. I think it's some old shell or rock. Good guess, old shell or rock, but not right. Keith. Human skull. <laughs> Keith's the closest. Oh, it's, actually, it's actually a tiny little caveman. Oh. <laughs> Chuck and, Rock. He chucked around Chuck and, Rock. And it also does that thing that um, Fire Breathers does in the sense it's a two-player game. Wow. So if there's nothing plugged into the second oh. port, it just goes by itself with you actually not being able to hit said caveman. Wait, you'd always win, though? 
Well, that's the thing. It's so hard to hit the damn thing. Like you still lost. You still lost. Even though you there's no other player against you. Yeah, still lost, you Dylan. still lost. So <laughs> yeah, great game. So that was number five. At uh, number four, we have the Cheater Man. Oh. So this is the Mega Drive version of the Cheater. Mm, this, this is the one I played. Oh, here we go. So I didn't like it. If the Cheater Man <laughs> on the NES goes from left to right, <laughs> where would you want the Mega Drive version to go from? I, uh, I'm not. I want to say it. I don't want to say it. How about from down to up? I was going to say right to the, <gasps> down to up. No, because yeah, because Ness went from left to right. Yeah. Mega Drive is up in the trees. It's wow, up, up. that sounds quite. No, but, to be fair, Rainbow Islands works that way, doesn't it? You have to get yeah, oh, yeah. that's true. Mm-hmm. Cheetah Men is very comparable to Rainbow Islands Ooh. in no way whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Cheetah Men is. Same kind of sprawling cheater. I don't know the name of the guy who you start off Apollo, with. maybe? Sorry. I'm going to say it's Apollo <laughs> slash Ares. No, it's Hercules, because he doesn't have a weapon, does he? No, he's just got his weird fist. So he's got fists. his big fist. Hercules. He's got this weird kind of fisty kind of attack, which yeah. looks like he's trying to hug someone. So yeah. Try and hug you and punch you at the same time. He's very conflicted. <laughs> he's very conflicted. So, yeah, you go up trees, but the collision detection is so horrendous and the enemies move so fast that you die again, instantly. You, you die instantly, pretty much. Mm. So I didn't get past the first level. As no, it comes me neither. To, comes as no surprise. But it's cheater men. So it was just I just felt I just felt, <laughs> you just felt happy that you were playing. You were drawn. Yeah, you were I just drawn. felt enriched by playing it. So <laughs> that was number four. Number three is something called Dark Side. Ooh, Look, Dark Side. Join me on the Dark Side. Is it like a Star Wars kind of game? Sort of. Oh. It's I've. My note. Oh no, not my notes. My mind. My mind. Is it a says, game that takes place entirely in the dark and like, not just going on? It's and just off. a blank screen, basically. You just play. You just press the buttons and hope that you don't die. <laughs> it's not really. It's actually a bit like asteroids. So what they've done, they've ripped off asteroids. Okay. Uh, so you're you're in the thing, but obviously asteroids, you're in like a big sprawling space, and you can kind of go around the screen and stuff. It's like a claustrophobic asteroids. So it's very obviously it's very easy to die, and when you put the boost on the little spaceship, you'll just crash into walls and die. Wow. But it was quite entertaining for the whole three seconds I was playing. It. <laughs> then number two on the list is a game called Bonkers, which I thought was quite good. So basically, it's like it's like a break it's like Breakout, mm. but you bounce around the ball. And you actually bounce on things to change the colour of the ball, and then you um, can break blocks of the same colour. Well, that sounds pretty It's good. actually quite clever, and the physics aren't bad. Um, you can actually bounce it around. I played the first couple of levels, I was like, ooh. And then I, f- uh, then I found a bug that meant that you can't actually get past it because you need to bounce it onto a key thing to unlock like a key block, ah. but it won't change. Oh. It actually wouldn't. I was there bouncing ah. it for like five minutes, trying to get it to, to, make, to make change the key. To unblock that, but yeah, bonkers. It, it was a bit bonkers. bonkers. It was a bit bonkers, but I think that's actually there, there's the hot, there's a, there's a good idea in there somewhere, but you know we'll never know because no one will ever pick it up. Anyway, number one. Oh, here we go. Number one. I'm gonna sing it. Go on. Daytona. Yes. <laughs> this will be the first <laughs> ever Daytona, Daytona game. No, no, because it was made in the same year. What was it? <laughs> Wait, the best Daytona was made. Daytona. <laughs> Look at Keith's face getting angry. <laughs> right, <laughs> Daytona. Um, do you remember when you played? You used to play Mortal Kombat, and you have those kind of little kind of graphics that like pop up and say like "Tutti" and yeah. another one. <laughs> yes. Do you know how they're in that kind of like photo-y kind of yeah. style? The very pixelated. early digitization yes. of pictures. Right. Yeah. Imagine that, but like a tenth as good. Ooh. And Im- in- and imagine a car that looks nothing like a NASCAR. <laughs> imagine a car that looks a bit like a Ferrari cross with a Porsche cross with a not NASCAR. Yeah. It sounds like you know that Simpsons episode where Homer makes the, the ideal car. Is it a bit like that car? <laughs> oh, he's not far <laughs> off. <laughs> In the sense that the sprite isn't even symmetrical. <laughs> Homer would be proud the of it car, at least. The car sprite in Daytona on Action 52 on the Mega Drive is not symmetrical. Wow. Which is, which is tick one, right? And yeah. also, it has, you have two gears. So you, yeah. you're obviously, and, but no, no discernible game mode. You go into it, and in fact, you can just leave it sat there all day, and it won't do anything. In fact, I couldn't find a way of either ending the game 
uh, quitting the game or completing the game. So you just go round and round and round, <laughs> and the the enemy car is like a red, it's like a red mashed up kind of sixties car. Ooh. Yeah. Also done in the same style, also um, asymmetrical. Right. It's so, a metaphor. Um, probably. It's a metaphor for life that you're always turning left. Mm. That, what that's you, deep, right? How would you feel, Keith, if someone knocked you in the room and said, don't worry, you can play don't, <laughs> Daytona, Daytona the whole weekend. Yeah! Mm. And then you find out you're playing Daytona on Action 52. Uh. And then you find the door is locked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you find you can't leave the room until, until you've, you've completed 200 miles on this, on this Daytona. 200 miles? Yes. It does have a odometer. There is an odometer on it. I think so. I just get stuck in. Yeah, <laughs> just do it. Just go for it. Oh, man, you'd be like. Do you know what? You you'd need a lobotomy. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but there is actually a game a bit like that on the Penn and Teller Mega CD game. We've heard about this. What, what, what? And you just drive a bus. Yes, the truck driving one. I, no, I think it's a bus. This. I think it's a bus. Yeah, and you literally have to drive it for for hours to complete it. And you literally <laughs> have to turn it left, right. It's, I'm, I'm sorry for going a bit of a tangent, but honestly, it's true. <laughs> Like if you, that's it's a game like if you leave the joypad, like the bus will start drifting off to the right and go off the road. So you <laughs> so constantly you have, have to constantly adjust. It. Yes, for hours and hours and like, then without, without any traffic. I without... think it was almost a prank, wasn't it? A prank yeah. game, but it's it's quite an interesting story. But there you go. Anyway, back. Sorry, sorry. Back to Daytona. Wow. My bad. Well, I think that's just kind of curved my Daytona thing. Daytona is my number one game on Action Fifty Two on the Mega Drive. <laughs> Check it out. Oh yeah. Keith, any views? We've already talked about the three that I played, actually. Um, Haunted Hills was... Did you try that? Yeah. It looked okay. Mm. I like, you know, I like the atmosphere of it. I wish you'd played the NES version as well. Yeah, I couldn't compare. But no, I played Cheetah Men, Haunted Hills Ah, and Daytona. Okay, Haunted Hills on um, Action 52 on the Mega Drive. Mm. How does it compare to Castlevania? (laughs) (laughs) Unfavourably. (laughs) Leave it at that. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh dear. Look, we'll we're wrap things up in a minute if that's cool then. Um, We've been talking for quite a long time about Action 52. Wow, I'm quite we surprised. Have, yeah. We have, we have. One last bit of trivia. Mm. Apparently, when they were think of names and ideas for games originally, when they first sat down together, uh, Mario and these uh, three other developers, they came up with an idea called RT, spelled R T Y, so RT and the Ink Man. And apparently it was going to be a kind of Mario Paint sort of game, but before Mario Paint was de- developed. Oh. And Vince said, hold that back. That can be a future standalone title. He really liked the idea. So that's a really interesting idea, but I think Mario Paint came like a year or two later. I don't mm. know the exact date. But there you go. There, was, there were some good ideas. So I, credit to Mario and the team. You know? Going back to Bonkers, yeah. I think I think Bonkers is, would be a good puzzle game if you actually made it. I... Guys, like us, please check out the interview with Mario. He's he's asked he's answered many many questions. He's very open about his time with Action Fifty Two. Yeah. I uh, the final kind of well, I I like this question. I said I basically asked him if you had the opportunity to turn back the clock, what would you have liked to have done differently with Action Fifty Two? Um, it's a shame we can't ask Vince the very same question. But do you want to hear what Mario said? Go for it. He said, "Knowing what I know now." I would have had Albert focus on random level generation and polish the platform controls to be more in line with Super Mario genres of games. Besides that, I really don't think I would have done anything else much different. Including presumably quitting a month before the end. Well, no, that's, well... I'm yeah, sure he had his reasons. He had his reasons. More time, Mario. Yeah, fair Wouldn't play. he have asked for more time? But look, he probably would ask more time, but... But look, when you think about it, the, this, this bad compilation of games has made it into an infamous story. Mm-hmm. Action 52 is one of the most craziest gaming stories out there. It's, 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 it's a folklore amongst I've games. enjoyed hearing about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and it, a lot of people have spoken in a lot more detail than me. There's loads of documentaries on YouTube. There's, there's that lovely blog I speak about. There's also the obviously interview with Mario to check out. It is quite an infamous story. And in a way, if they made some sort of mediocre games and it, was, and it sold okay, uh, yeah. it, it wouldn't have the same well, legacy, would it? Yeah, yeah. So the fact it's dubbed, uh, I'm sure Mario won't mind me saying this, but the fact it's been dubbed as one of the worst games ever made kind of adds to its charm. It adds <laughs> to the mystery. You know? Well, I've, apparently as well, um, good old Mario, he's, he's, he's been working with certain people to make a book or documentary on Action 52, so that might be coming out in the near future. So if that does, check it out. So there you go, guys. If you, wanna, whew, if you want some torture in your life, <laughs> check out some Action 52. But we'll, we'll, we'll say lights, camera... Action. 52. 
Thanks for listening to today's podcast. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch regarding this week's episode or anything else, you can tweet us at Arcade Attack UK, at Keith Barlow82, and at Arcade underscore Adriano. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcade Attack UK. Please check out our website at arcadeattack.co.uk for lots of retro gaming goodness, interviews, reviews, features, top 10, etc. And you can also find all our previous podcasts there. Our podcasts are available to stream from the website and from SoundCloud and are available to download for free from Stitcher, Podbean and iTunes, where you can also leave us a review and a rating, which we would really, really appreciate. So until next time, take care and we'll speak to you soon.